The injustice against Harry's nurses registry and Harry Dorvalier only the Department of Labor and IRS may use Section 29 U.S.C. Section 216, B. In recent times, the justice system has faced numerous controversial cases that highlight potential loopholes and misuse of legal provisions. One such example is the case of Claudia Gale v. Harry's Nurses Registry Inc., Case No. 1 07 CV 04672. On the surface, it appeared to be a straightforward wage and labor dispute, however, a deeper examination revealed a complex web of questionable legal tactics and potential misconduct. Harry's Nurses Registry, HNR, and its corporate officer, Harry Dorvalier, found themselves ensnared in a lawsuit brought forth under the Fair Labor Standards Act, FLSA. This act, especially at Section 29 U.S.C. Section 216, B, was designed to protect workers and ensure they are compensated fairly for their services. However, the law is clear on who can invoke these provisions, only the Department of Labor, DOL, and the IRS. Yet, in a twist, the case against HNR was initiated by a private attorney named Jonathan Bernstein, using the name Claudia Gale. Under standard procedures, when a violation of the FLSA is suspected, the DOL conducts an audit on the employer in question. If any violations are found during this audit, the DOL can then invite affected employees to give their consent, allowing a collective lawsuit against the employer to proceed. A crucial point to note here is that private attorneys do not have the same authority or standing as the DOL to launch such lawsuits. However, Bernstein sidestepped this process. He used the name Claudia Gale to file the lawsuit against HNR and Harry Dorvalier, effectively bypassing the need for the DOL's involvement or the collection of consent from potential claimants. As the case evolved, it expanded into a class action lawsuit, further complicating matters. But the irregularities didn't stop there. Allegations surfaced accusing Bernstein of breaking into the HNR office, intending to unlawfully obtain the names and personal information of nurses. The goal? To bolster the list of plaintiffs for the class action. And even more shockingly, subsequent investigations into the primary plaintiff, Claudia Gale, unveiled alarming details. The name appeared to be associated with the social security number of a deceased individual, and various aliases and addresses linked to this name spanned multiple states. For justice to be served, the Department of Labor would typically need to determine whether an employer indeed failed to provide overtime payments as claimed. In the Gale v. HNR case, no such determination was made by the DOL. Given these glaring anomalies and the lack of an official DOL determination, one would expect the case to be dismissed promptly. However, this did not happen, which brought into question the justice system's integrity and raised concerns over potential violations of the 14th Amendment rights of HNR and Harry Dorvalier. The case's intricate layers and dubious tactics employed are a testament to the potential vulnerabilities in our legal system. The story of HNR and Harry Dorvalier serves as a cautionary tale, urging meticulous scrutiny in legal proceedings and underscoring the need for reform to prevent such miscarriages of justice in the future.